We're here to talk about depressions and their development. Depressions are uh, one of the two weather systems that affect the UK. They are unfortunately our most common weather system that tends to bring us very unsettled weather. Okay, now depressions form when two air masses meet. An air mass is a body of air with similar characteristics in terms of temperature and humidity. Now, these occur when we have cold weather mass and a warm. The cold one in this case is called the polar maritime air mass and the warm one is the tropical maritime air mass. Maritime because they develop over the sea, tropics because it's coming from the warm tropical regions and the polar one because it comes from the poles. So they have very very different characteristics. Okay so they're coming, they're meeting together and the point at which they meet is called a front. OK, and the front is also known as the boundary between two air masses. Now, what happens when they meet? Because they have different characteristics, they cannot mix. So the warm air mass tends to start to push into the cold air mass and it forms what we call a little dent or a little wave into the cold air. So here we have the warm and here we have the cold. So it's continuing to push and as it pushes into the cold air, we have the beginning of what we call a depression. So the warm air is pushing into the cold and the cold air actually starts to swirl around the warm air. And the hey presto, this is what we have a depression. Okay, now I'll just show this a wee bit larger. So here we have the warm air pushing into the cold air and the cold air is moving this direction. Now, because the warm air is moving this way, in this direction, we have what we call a warm front, the front of this body of warm air behind it. Now, because the cold air is catching up on this warm sector or this warm part of the depression, this is the front of the cold air mass. OK, so this is our polar maritime air mass and this is our tropical maritime air mass. And this is what a depression looks like on a weather map, obviously in very, very simple terms. OK, now over time, what will happen is that this cold front here, it's still pushing and it is actually going to catch up eventually on the warm front. The warm front from this side is pushing, still pushing into the cold air. OK. What will eventually happen is that this cold front will start to catch up on the warm front until eventually what will happen is it will catch up with it completely and that will be the end of your depression. OK, now let's just take a wee step back. We know this air is all cold because this is part of the polar maritime air mass. This part here is warm because it is part of the tropical maritime air mass. So we have two different types of air in a depression. We have cold air and we have warm air. We have two fronts. We have the warm front, which is the front of the warm air. And we have the cold front, which is the front of the cold air mass. OK, now what happens at fronts? Well, if we look at this one, when warm air meets cold air, What's going to happen? As we know, warm air rises. So this warm air will rise. And as air rises, it cools. Condensation occurs. We have clouds and then we have rain. So we tend to have a body of rain at the warm front. On the other side of this warm part or this warm sector, as we call it, we have the cold front. And the cold front, um, cold air actually sinks. And because it's sinking, it's actually undercutting the back end, so to speak, of this warm sector and it's forcing the warm air to rise. And once again, when air rises, it cools, condenses, we have clouds and therefore we have rain. So this is part of the reason why we have very wet conditions in a depression, because we have the warm front where warm meets the cold air. So the warm air is forced to rise. We have clouds and we have rain. We also have this cold front which is chasing the warm front. And as it undercuts or pushes underneath the warm air, it forces it up, creating clouds and also rain. OK, now, very often on an exam, you will have to look at a cross section of a depression. 
Okay, so let's just have a look at this. Here we have the warm front. Here we have the cold front. So if you imagine that this is a plan view looking down at a depression from above, or bird's eye views is often called, this is looking at it from the ground. Okay, so somebody standing at the ground over here. So warm front, warm front, cold front, cold front. So in between the two fronts, we know that we have this warm tropical maritime air. Okay, before the cold front, this is part of this cold sector. So we have cold air, also known as the polar maritime air. On the other side of this cold front, we also have cold air, which also is a polar maritime cold air. OK, so as we said before, with depressions and as they develop, this front is moving a lot faster than this front. So this one is going to start to catch up with this one. So over time, what will happen is that this front will start to get closer. Until it gets to a point, OK, where, you know, it starts to actually move the warm air off the ground and squeezes it up. OK. OK, just realised you couldn't see half of my picture. So just to go over that again, we have the warm front, we have the cold front. Cold, cold, warm, warm, warm air in the middle, part of the warm sector. And at either side of our warm front, we have our cold air. And we also have our cold air here to the left of the cold front. OK, so what happens? This front tries to catch up on the warm front. So the cold front here is catching up on the warm front until eventually what will happen is that the warm air starts to get smaller and smaller in size until eventually it is squeezed out and upwards. OK, just to show you what I mean by that. So if we start off again, we have our warm front, we have our cold front, the warm air is in the middle. Over time, we know this warm front isn't moving quite as fast as the cold front, so this cold front starts to advance. Warm front still moving, cold front starting to advance until we start to see that the warm air, air in the warm sector is starting to get smaller and is actually being squeezed up and outwards until eventually it will disappear. OK, whenever the cold front actually does catch up on the warm front, then we have what we call an occluded front. OK, which also gives us very wet weather and so forth. But at that point, once this sector of warm air is completely squeezed up and out, disappears, that is the end of our depression. And unfortunately, what usually happens is that we have another one again. OK, so just to go back and just to go over this very quickly again. OK, depressions are low pressure weather systems that they affect the UK. They develop when we have two different air masses that meet our polar maritime air mass, which is cold, our tropical maritime air mass, which is warm. Whenever they do meet, they meet at what we call a front or the boundary line between two air masses. The warm air starts to make a little dent into the warm air or sorry, the cold air or what we call is a wave. Eventually, it'll keep pushing in until the cold air starts to swirl around this warm air. And hey presto, we have a depression. OK, so two sectors in a depression. We have cold air and we have warm air. The warm air we find in between the two fronts. So the warm air is pushing into the cold. So this is where we have the warm front or the front of the warm air. We have a cold front, which is then followed by cold air. So this is a direction our warm air is moving. This is the direction the cold air is moving. 
So when we look at it from ground level, warm air is rising, as we know, over the cold air. So when it rises, we have clouds and we have rain. On the other side, the cold front, cold front is sinking underneath the warm air and it is squashing us upwards. So as it moves up, you have clouds and we have rain. So this is why we have different periods of rain at our warm front and at our cold front. Warm front is usually a long period of steady rain. Cold front is a short torrential downpour. Okay, so as we know, our cold front, it moves faster than our warm front. So it's always advancing. And as it's moving, it's starting to squeeze the warm air. So here it started to move here. And the warm air is continuing to be squeezed upwards and outwards until eventually it completely catch up on the cold front and the warm air will disappear. And whenever the cold front catches up on the warm front, that is when we have what we call an occlusion or an occluded front. 